Uh, in today's vlog, we will cover edge detection in OpenCV. In today's, we will cover multiple topics related to edge detection with OpenCV. We look at Laplacian edge detection, Sobel edge detection, Canny edge detection, uh, finally contour identification and how to create bounding boxes on our identified contours. You're going to see all that. Now, edge detection is needed to detect objects in a picture. Uh, that edge is mathematically defined as a point at which there's a distinct change in value, in pixel value. So, for example, if this is a picture and we have pixel values going from, say, black to white or bright, uh, this point can be defined as the point of transition. Now, the way we choose to do this is we identify the point with the highest slope. And the point with highest slope is defined as a point of transition. The easiest way to define, identify the slope is to find the first derivative. So if you identify the first derivative of this transition line, we get a slope that looks like this, or a curve that looks like this, and the highest point of that curve over here, so the highest point where, where the slope is the highest, is the point of transition. So Sobel filters uses this concept of you maximizing or finding the point where the first derivative is the highest is, is the highest uh, and uses that as a point of transition. Now interestingly, if we plot the second derivative of this transition, we would note that at the point of transition where the slope or the first derivative is highest, the second derivative is actually zero. So the Laplacian uses the second derivative to identify the edge. So it looks for the second derivative and tries to identify zeros. Now, uh, we, so we've looked at the mathematical concept of edge detection. Now let's look at a real example. Okay, we will first import the libraries we use. Nothing funny here. Give me a second, sorry. And uh, so we will use this picture, which I have. Uh, this picture is a, is, uh, is a picture of GPS asset trackers, which I've taken from my office. And we will use this picture to run edge detection. Okay, so first, let's read it in. And let's first apply the Laplacian. Uh, as I just said, the Laplacian involves calculating the double derivative of the pixel values and it tries to identify the zeros where the double derivative is zero and that point is identified as the points of transition. So let's just apply that. Uh, there's another interesting thing that needs to get done is that uh, typically all pictures we use are 64-bit float, represent are, sorry, 8-bit representations. But when we look at edge detection, we need to start looking at 64-bit float representations. They need to be richer because besides values, we also have edge definitions like they can be positive when it goes from black to white or negative when the transition is from white to black. So 8-bit representations are not sufficient and we need to use 64-bit float representations. So that's what we use here. Uh, so uh, after we have created Laplacian, we then finally need to convert it back to an 8-bit representation if we need to see it as an image, which is done here, and we can see the result. Okay. The next type of filter is the Sobel filter, which involves identifying the first derivative and then finding the point at which the first derivative is maximum. The, these filters need to get applied both horizontally and vertically. So that's what we see here. We need to get a Sobel X where we've applied the Sobel filter on the image, converted that to 64-bit float. And uh, the, first para the third parameter here has to be 1 and the fourth parameter has to be 0. Similarly, when we're identifying the Sobel, uh, uh, the output of the Sobel filter across the y-axis, the uh, third value is 0 and the fourth value is 1. In the end, we again do the same thing. We convert it back to an 8-bit integer when we need to visualize it. And then we need to combine uh, the outputs of the x and y Sobel transformation using a bitwise OR. So this is, does a bitwise OR at every, at every pixel point. And in the end, what we've done is we've just put all of it together, the original image, the combined image, Sobel X and Sobel Y. 
in a, a nice little plot so that just we can see all of it together. So you can see this was our original image and we get an X, the output on the X, the output using the Sobel X, the output using Sobel Y and the combined one is, you can see, is a combination of both of them. And if you want to look at the com combined Sobel filter, as you can see, you can identify the edges all across. Canny edge detector. The Canny edge detector is a multi-process step. It involves first blurring the image to remove noise, then computing the Sobel gradients along the X and Y directions. In the end, there is an edge suppression process and finally an hysteresis thresholding stage that finally determines if a pixel is edge-like or not. So repeating first, we have a Gaussian blur to remove the noise. The next step involves identifying the gray Sobel gradients along the x-axis would be gx and the y-direction which will be gy. The final gradient and the angles can be cal are calculated by this formula below where you have the edge gradient and uh, the angle of the gradient. Now after getting the full gradient what it's also done is a full scan is done to remove unwanted pixels or filtration process. Uh, in the end, the last process is uh, the process of an, a thresholding, a hysteresis-based thresholding. So, uh, Gani Edge Detector it takes two values, two threshold values, a max val and a min val. Uh, so, any edge value, if it's above the max val, it's considered to be a sure edge. And any uh, anything below the min val is considered to be a sure not edge. And the values in the between are then analyzed. So for example, if you have a point C, and so point C is below max val but above min val. So what is looked at is if C is connected to a sure edge, like for example, it's connected to A, which is a sure edge, C is also considered to be an edge. B on the other hand is again below max val, but it's not connected to a sure edge, so is discarded and it's is discarded and it's not connect, connected to be an, it's not considered to be an edge. Now again, we're going to take the picture which I have, which is a set of GPS devices from an office. We then we grayscale it and we apply Gaussian blurring with a 5x5 five five kernel. And as you can see, this kind of reduces some of the noise here and there. You can still see some noise. And then we apply canny. The apply we have applied a min val and a max val of min val of 30 and a max val of 300. And after I've done that, what we get is that we get a neat outline of all our of all my GPS devices, of all my uh, devices, a very clean contour. So the contours are very clearly identified, as you can see, with a canny edge detector. What I can next do is I can actually identify these contours and access them separately by using the function find contours. Uh, the red external just ensures that I look at the uh, the contours that are outside and it, it, it basically doesn't look any contours if they are within uh, with another contour. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to call it coins. And we can then draw the contours and see it on our picture. So as you can see, I have drawn the contours on our picture. And I have a nice blue outline identifying the contours. And uh, I, I can clearly see where my, uh, I have clearly identified where my device, where my devices are. You can then add a bounding box across these contours using a red. So I've used a rectangle. I've uh, used a bounding rect across the across each contour, and we have applied a rectangle over there, where we use and used a bright green color to identify our contour, uh, identify the bounding box around the contour, and this way we can clearly identify objects in any picture.